Hey Gems, how you doing? This is Fee, Diamond the Rock. I'm going to do a whip and chat, but first I'd give you a quick look at Wisteria Moon. So, um, how's that detail? How is that detail? Just kind of size so far that I have done is 30 centimeters. So that's a 30 by 40 to this side. This is a, so that'll be 30 by 40 that size as well. So um, give you an idea of, so that's 30 by 40 there. This is an idea of how much detail um, is in this diamond painting. And with all the change of the color colors, yes, it is frustrating, but I will say, um, it is stunning. I initially started working little squares because there were so many colour changes. Now I've actually started going a big section. Um, yeah. So I'm going to pause here. I'll get myself all sitting down, ready, and uh, I'll do a bit of a whip and chat. Gems, what have you been up to? Anything interesting? Me, obviously taken some time out um, I will let you know that I haven't I have been recording so I will say I have been recording but what I need to actually say is although I've been recording I haven't been editing uh, that's one thing that I haven't been doing which is why there's no videos and then <laughs> I did an unboxing from Koo Hall, another one. I ordered some masks from Koo Hall. I unboxed them and completed them. I did the work on them. Um, I recorded most of the work on them uh, as a time lapse. And then I thought I'd recorded the end bit with showing all the masks. So I went to put the video together last night. You know, I got in, started the editing, and then it was like, oh crap, I didn't finish, I didn't actually record the bit where I um, showed all the masks. The problem now is that I'd actually, I'm three masks down. <laughs> My um, son has two and uh, my son's ex-girlfriend has one. She actually brought one from me. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm just going to, uh, what I'm going to have to do is just to show you the unboxing only. Um, but when I discovered that I hadn't done the, uh, shown all the recorded showing all of the masks completed. Although I think I've got a picture of them completed. Maybe I can put that at the end of it, but um, I won't show, yeah, I'll, I'll show you the unboxing. This is me in my head going, my plan is now, this This is why you haven't been seeing videos because I'm, do, I'm thinking along one line and then suddenly it just goes, no, I won't do that, I'll do this. And this is where my, I, I'm a little bit scrambled in things and it's really, it's a real struggle at the moment trying to do anything but I'll have to sit back and watch this and work out what my final decision was which is I'll show you the unboxing and a small section of time lapse of working on I think the B which is my favorite and then I'll show you a picture at the end of it of all five because I think I have a picture of all five I think um, how about I just work out, make sure I do. Yes, I have a picture. Six, not five, six. Yep. Um, but the one I will, there we go. The one I will show you with the time lapse of is actually me working on the B. Uh, the funny thing is that I ordered those masks. They only arrived last week. I ordered those masks as a just in case. So we'd had, just had an announcement from the premier um, last week sometime or, or the week before 
So our Premier is probably like in the US is your governor. So our Premier has mandated if you're going to the airport, you have to wear a mask or it was a $5,000 fine. So I thought, well, I'll go and order some masks. Uh, as a just in case, I know that I have to go to the airport in a couple of weeks time to pick my son up from Esperance. So, you know, it was just, you know, I'll, I'll get some masks done. So I ordered six and they arrived last week. And then yesterday happened. Ha 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 ha. We now mandatory mask wearing and we are on a five day lockdown. Yeah. So we have been, Western Australia has been no community spread for nearly 10 months. So if you can imagine, we, are, we have had a very um, easy time, and I will say that it's been an easy time of COVID because we went into a hard lockdown for six weeks. We sucked it up. Um, that's the best way to put it. We sucked it up. It's like, well, we're in lockdown. We dealt with it. Uh, we had, you know, our restrictions were the same as what we are now. We've just gone into what they're setting up as a five-day uh, lockdown. I reckon we'll be in a lockdown for longer than five days. Um, but we'll see. Uh, essential workers only. Uh, if you are able to work from home you work from home this time though we didn't have we we didn't have it last time but this time masks are mandatory so um, I have masks uh, although I'm three short my my son got two which is a matching penguin a boy and a girl penguin because he's due to go to Queensland <laughs> there's another story um, he's due to go to Queensland, so it's going to take one for him and one for her, so they match. I lost what symbol I was working on. Jeez. Um, and then his his flatmate, who was his ex-girlfriend, uh, he sent her a picture of the masks, and did she just turn around and said, I'll buy one. So, uh, yeah, I sold one. I actually and I she didn't she didn't pick um, I turned it because Dion said oh she'd like to buy one from you and I looked at him and went well my least favorite is the turtle so um, I'll sell that to her for 20 bucks uh, yeah so let's just say that basically paid for the three months what I spent for the three masks, excluding the time. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so now we are on a five-day lockdown. Essential workers only are able to leave their homes. If you're able to work from home, you must work from home. We're allowed to go out and shop for essentials. So this is where I'm going to have another dummy spit in a sec. We are now allowed to we are allowed to go and shop for essentials uh, so you know grocery stores all of that they're still open you know that's class as essential we can buy takeaway food there's no restaurants or pubs open you know the standard things uh, where I am we can't work remotely so we are back to the old system when I go back to work where we do day shift in the city and night shift at the uh, backup data centre. So I like the backup data centre because it's less than a 10 minute drive from where I live. It's really close, really handy. We will, at work, we will actually get our, we're now not allowed to use public transport. Um, Yes, public transport is still out there. We're still able to use it. But for work-wise, we have been told we are not allowed to use public transport. 
which means we, our parking will get paid for us and all of that lovely jazz, which is great. A uh, little bit of a difference for us at work is masks. Now we, masks and the cleaning schedule. So masks, we now have to wear masks because masks are mandatory, but we have to wear masks in the office at points of doing, um, for where we are, point when we're doing handover. If we're at our desk by ourselves, we do not need to wear our mask, but we need to wipe down and clean, sterilize our desk basically just before handover so the next person coming in you know, doesn't have much of a issue with touching desks and all of that. So that's that side of it. So, but I've got two more days before I have to go to work. Um, so lockdown is today, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and it's till 6 p.m. Friday. Our company, will, uh, we will stay on the special measures for, for longer than that. But I expect Western Australia will probably, or the, the areas that are on lockdown, will probably be locked down longer. Ah, doesn't matter. It's, to me, it is what is best for us to be able to get back to the way we used to be. You know, when I used to take you guys shopping, there was no masks. Now, <laughs> when we go shopping, there will be masks. Um, yeah. <sighs> uh, so yeah, it's really funny that we turn around, we get told we're on lockdown. So the note, no, the the news announcement was at one o'clock. Although I heard about a news a media thing happening at one o'clock, I heard at twelve. So basically, we knew that we were going to go into lockdown. You know, I turned around, I got a message from one of the guys I work with. You know, we have a group chat. And he went, news alert coming out, midday. Keep an eye out, rah, 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 all that jazz, you know. So we knew, you know, most of the people here in Western Australia may have known that we were about to go into lockdown before the announcement was made so basically on a rumor not a hundred percent confirmed people went and panic shopped so the shops have been stripped bare apparently um, yeah and it's stupid absolutely stupid the biggest thing to remember for us, you know, we are still able to go to the shops and buy stuff and buy our essentials. People have gone and rushed out at the point where even the areas where this person had been, the suburb, this main suburb this person had been, even the shopping centre that he had been to, that was even... Um, was crowded with people you know and you get there and think now these people that went and hit the shops before any announcement went out any notification of what suburbs were affected um, they've gone out and you know what the likelihood that they will um, possibly catch it is so high there's going to be so many more. The person that caught the uh, COVID, it's only one person, so it's only one case and we've gone into lockdown for Perth metropolitan area plus a couple of other areas outside of the metropole. So it's not like we've gone down into lockdown for, for suburbs. It's the whole Perth city area. Um, but yeah, even before that, people have gone and panic shopped. And we still have the ability to go to the shops to get stuff. So if I need to go to the shop and get stuff, I still have that ability. Although, 
going from the last time we had a panic buy, it's almost not worth going to the shops because people have stripped the shelves bare. You know, even Nathan, before the announcement came out, he turned around and said, oh, we better get to the shops. And I've turned around and said to him, I am not going anywhere near the shops. I turned around and said, it will be a mass panic and it is a higher it gives a higher probability of someone that has been undiagnosed to be in that shopping centre sharing their germs with you. I am not going anywhere near the shops. We have plenty of food, we have toilet paper, rah -de rah you know, we have just about everything we need. <laughs> but, you know, people have gone stupid. People are stupid. If, if purely on a, there's going to be a COVID announcement, people have hit the shops. One of Nathan's mates, Nathan was on the phone to him, and they were actually in a shopping centre um, because they'd heard the rumour that there was going to be a COVID announcement. So they hit the shops. And I don't know whether his mate heard it. But I turned around, I heard I heard, I heard Nathan talking to me on the phone and I went, anybody that goes near the shops, excuse the language, but I went, anybody that goes near the shopping centres now are fucking idiots and are going to cause more problems than anything. So I don't know whether his mate heard it. Um, but it is. You get this panic, panic, panic and it's in that panic it is in that panic that people get there and spread spread or catch from others without realizing it anyway, the suburb where this guy frequented their shopping center was packed you know how long does the this sit on somebody's on on how long does this virus sit on surfaces? Metal surfaces, we're saying like five days. Well, he only got diagnosed three days ago. Three, four days ago. Three days ago. He got diagnosed Saturday. So the announcement came out on Sunday. So the possibility if this guy had been to, well, he had been to these certain places, if you've touched a surface that he's touched, there's a possibility that you may get it. You know, that's just... To the degree of caution that I believe should be, if there's a possibility you're going where somebody may have been, um, yeah. This is me and the way I see things. This is the reason why uh, Nathan was like, "Oh well, you need to go." You know, last night he goes, "Well, you're going to go to the shops tomorrow. Go get a few, anything." And I went, "Nope, I'm not going near the shops. If I don't need to go near the shops." the better off it is. Um, Dion, who was actually doing his weekly shop, which he normally does on Mondays, but he, he was rostered to work tomorrow, Monday, which is today. So he did his, his week, he was doing his weekly shop on Sunday before anything really hit. And he was there going, they came out of nowhere. <laughs> And all I could say to him was, so you're still in the shops? Yes. Okay. There's one thing that I know that I'm short on that I need. Are you able to get me a tin of deodorant? Yes. So that's the only thing that I needed that I was concerned about. I've got deodorant, but it's like, deodorant's the one thing that I, yeah, I need to make sure I have. Because uh, I carry one, I have one at home and I carry one in my bag for work, you know, just in case. We all like to smell, smell pretty. Sorry, most of us like to smell pretty. So yeah, he, he grabbed me a couple of tins of deodorant while he was, he was out. But I asked him just to grab me one. He actually brought me two, so not that I needed two. But yeah, he was like there, they were everywhere. The shopping centre he was in was packed. 
Hang on, just looking for the last of the settings symbol. Um, so yeah, it's quite an interesting thing to see a place that has had no community spread and then suddenly we have in one case we get this bang you're shut down um, and then you hear, hear the rumor mill which is the rumor mill is horrible um, next one I'll do is that one the rumor mill that goes along with it so Nathan, a little bit later on in the day, was talking to his mate and his mates turned around and had, there's 87 cases. They've got 87 cases. And I turned, you know, Nathan's like, well, the media's not keeping up with this. Rah, rah, rah. And I turned around and said to him, if there was 87 cases, it would be announced. They wouldn't hide that amount from us. Our Premier is pretty well up front and we, he's done really well for our state Well, considering we've been so had it so free. And I turned around and said to Nathan, it's that panic talking that's going to cause more problems. I turned around and said to him, I don't know what the numbers are. We've been told one case. That's all we've been told. But 86 cases, it's a bit extreme and possibly possibly it could be that they have 86 people in quarantine to be tested as opposed to 86 positives you know it's it, it's the rumor mill that causes more damage and panic and I mean Nathan Nathan Nathan's a bit of a germaphobe <laughs> just a little bit um, yeah, even if Dion Outside of COVID, even pre-COVID, if Dion had a cold, he wasn't allowed to visit us. That's how bad Nathan is about scared about getting sick. Um, which I don't blame him. But, you know, he's got his mate telling him, oh, there's 86 cases. And I'll turn around and when Nathan's gotten off the phone, Nathan's kind of semi-panicking and it's like, no. If they had... 87 cases we would know the media would be it would be out in the media not in the rumor mill I said maybe that is how many people they have in uh, quarantine in isolation that are being tested and Nathan's like well you know they, they found out the results yesterday why didn't they tell us today you know maybe they did find them yesterday maybe they only found out got the positive result today on the Sunday uh, you know, I couldn't, I didn't have the patience to deal with him and the way he was panicking. But my thought was, in the time that they find out and before they start the panic, they have to get to and contact all those people or businesses that that person has been to. So they have the ability to stop them from going out and panic buying. So highly likely the way they've done it is they've identified you know he's come for you know he's tested positive so they've turned around and gone close contacts bang contacted them i bet you those close contacts were already in in isolation before it was announced in the media because as soon as they put anything out in the media people panic you know, I have no desire to go out. If I have to go out, I'm dreading having to go out. I don't like going out anyway. But when it's like this, if I don't have to go out, I won't go out. We have a freezer, we have a pantry. You know. If I need to go and get fresh food, so be it. But Nathan and I did our grocery shopping on Saturday. We don't need to go to the shops. Yet yeah, he seemed like we needed, <laughs> Nathan was like, oh, we need to get to the shops, make sure we've got stuff. But it's like, we are fine, we've got plenty. You know, somebody put on there about, somebody on Facebook put a post about um, someone was charging 200 bucks for a loaf of bread on Marketplace. And I 
I put a comment on there, stupid. And then followed with, the bakeries will still be baking bread tomorrow. The cows will still be giving milk tomorrow. <laughs> the eggs will still lay, the chooks will still lay eggs tomorrow. Chooks won't be able to wipe their bums tomorrow because there's no toilet paper. But fresh produce will be available every day. Anyway, it's just stupid. Stupid. I like sitting here, uh, you know, I, I sit in my own little world, which is I've, I've been doing a lot of lately. Um, but yeah, you just get there and why is it so, why do people panic by? And it's just, panic buying, I can understand in some cases. But the announcement came out, well, the announcement that there was going to be an announcement from our Premier came out at about 12, or just before 12, I do believe. And the, the actual media coverage, the, the announcement on the news didn't happen until uh, 1 o'clock, around the 1 o'clock mark. That's when they put us down into lockdown and they went from 6pm to night, um, lockdown, rah, rah, rah. Immediately, as effective immediately was masks, but as of 6pm Sunday night, 5 uh, five day lockdown yeah so people panicked I mean for those of you that are weekly shoppers if you'd done your shopping like we had on the Saturday would you think you needed to go to the shops again to buy everything it's just yeah frustrating to watch frustrating to watch you know, those people that don't go to the shops very often. If I need to go to the shops and get something, because, you know, perhaps, perhaps today, Monday was my shopping day. If I had to go to the shops today for my shopping day, because I only shop once a week, there'll be nothing for me to get. So anybody that, like, doesn't shop on a weekend and uses, waits till Monday because they don't like the crowds, there's going to be nothing for them. You know, people that are retired are the ones that tend to shop on, on weekdays. Mind, I think pension pay is Wednesday this week. So when they get their pensions, the elderly, when they get their pensions, there's not going to be anything on the shelf. Not much on the shelf for them to purchase. You know, that's, yeah, that's sad. But there's nothing you can do. Just, you know. But I'd hate to be one of those people that went to the shopping centre where this guy had been and then gone, heck, you know. <laughs> this guy's been where I just went, where I went shopping. How do you feel now? Us for work, work-wise. So we've got our masks that we have to wear, um, you know anybody that's you know it's quite interesting you know we do 12 and a half hour days we might get you know some time without having having to wear a mask but you know because we we, we wear microphones and and headsets we have to talk we have, we have to be understood so we can't be muffled um but you know it's just for us it'll be masks we have to do all because we hot desk, we have to um, clean everything down before the next person comes along. We we now have a contract register. If any of us lived in the suburbs where you know the hotspot suburbs, they're not allowed to come in at all. They have to go and get tested before they're and, and given a negative result before they are allowed to return to work. You know, it's just. So for us at work, you know, we may lose some people. However, 
I will admit that some of the most of the suburbs mentioned are the suburbs that most of the train controllers live in. Um, you know, the suburb that that this this guy was in most of the time is not low socioeconomic area, but it's um, yeah, it just. It's not somewhere where you know, people on our income just don't live in those areas. It's probably the better way to put it. We might have family members in that area, but we don't live, most of us wouldn't live in those areas. Not being rude or, or insensitive to anybody out there because I understand, but you, know, you get there and hope that not many of us, not many in our crews are in those areas. I saw a Pac Man, there he is. Um, so yeah, we've got that, we're Malaga, which on night shift we're at Malaga, which is not good. Uh, well, it's good, but it's not good. At Malaga, there's nowhere to go and sleep. <laughs> so generally, you go and have a sleep in the car. That's it, that's your sleep spot. Um, so yeah. Interesting process, interesting process. Go back to the what we were doing. We were, I think we did about six months out there at Malaga. Look at the bright side, less fuel, <laughs> not paying for parking. <laughs> Working at Malaga for, for me is cheaper. It's less expensive. Um, yeah, so you know, <laughs> I look at the bright side of things. You got to look at the bright side of things. Um, we'll see how Nathan goes with his first day back at work. So he's at work today. Yeah, his shop where he works, they sell fridges and cooking equipment and gas. So um, he's. The business he works at is classed as essential so that stays open you know we're not neither of us were out of work for the last last time they did the lockdown neither of us had to not go into you know, go into work so but lockdown for five days i work wednesday thursday this week on day shift and then I start work at six o'clock on Friday. Well, our lockdown supposedly is only until um, five o'clock or six, no, six o'clock. Six o'clock Friday. So even then we're out of out of lockdown if they, <laughs> if they do take us out of lockdown, which I doubt it. But I dare say we will be staying out at Malaga for quite a while quite a while we've our we we, <laughs> we already have a uh, random COVID testing at work so I've had one random test at work I've had been, had two tests for COVID um, both you know through work um, so yeah we'll just see what happens out there because yeah, uh, what else can we do? What else can we do? So yeah, we are now <laughs> mask mandated, <laughs> which is really cool. I have ordered more masks from Kuhul. Um, they're quite pretty. And just be aware that at the moment, uh, Chinese New Year is about to happen. So if you're actually purchasing from any of the any of the stores that are in China or over that per, that that well, how, how do I put it that drop ship from China, if you actually do have a company that you buy from and they ship from China, you're going to find a delay. Ku Hall has some um, notification up that if you're if if it's in the what's it called if 
if it's not something you have to pre-order that they make so if it's in stock right there they will actually they can ship it up until they go on um, their uh, New Year's holiday so they're ready to ship stuff so they're ready to ship stuff there won't be a delay until New Year Chinese New Year starts so when I purchase the masks the masks are actually ready to ship so there's no I should get those in a couple of weeks should be shipped out pretty quickly because there's no waiting for those ones okay where's the next lot of Pac-Mans no more Pac-Mans okay I'll probably come across more Pac-Mans we all do it we all do it we always find there's another symbol Okay, okay, next one. Excuse me. Four one four. Um so yeah, that's what's going on here. Um I was supposed to be booking an appointment to see my doctor. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's not happening. They're <laughs> they're shut. <laughs> um, so there's no chance of me getting in and seeing my doctor. I've just got to. I'll wait for a week, see whether we come out of lockdown, and then I'll make a booking from there. I've got to go and see him. Get my stuff together. Um. Hmm. Hello. Dion won't be far from being here. He's looking at so he's moving in back home and which is a good thing. So he's moving back home. Um but he's also supposed to be going to Queensland. So hopefully Queensland will open up their borders in time, but we will see. He is devastated because, so he booked his ticket to go to Queensland and then Queensland, WA shut their borders to Queensland because Queensland had community spread. And then a couple of days ago, actually on Saturday, I think it was, I think it was Saturday, Saturday Queensland, um, had no community spread within a certain amount of time so Western Australia opened their borders up to Queensland so Dion was like yay you know so he when he knew the borders were open he went and booked the accommodation because he already had the flights but he hadn't booked accommodation so, so he booked the accommodation on Saturday and then on Sunday we go into lockdown so Queensland's locked its borders against anyone for coming from WA so <laughs> he is devastated again so he was devastated when WA locked, closed the borders to Queensland now he's devastated that Queensland has closed the borders to WA what it means is that for him to go to Queensland he has to go to Queensland quarantine at his own cost uh, at a hotel it's going to cost so if he has to quarantine it, you know it's two weeks um, he just can't get a break the poor kid but, uh, you know he can't go to Queensland quarantine for a couple of weeks and then spend time with her and then come back um, that's three weeks that would be about three weeks away from work and he can't do that he cannot be without work for that long um, he's already prepared for it the last time he went over to visit her when she was in South Australia same situation he booked his ticket then they closed the borders um, he did have to quarantine on the way back but he was able to self quarantine at home um, however yeah yeah, it's a bit of a hard situation for the kid. I feel sorry for him in that way. 
So non his his flights to Queensland are non refundable, non cancelled. You know, he, book, he instead of paying extra to be able to move his flights, he, he booked the cheapest cheapest flight he could because he thought it was all good and roses to go over there. Um, yeah, not anymore. I think nowadays if you book a flight that is and you don't pay for the option to be able to uh, switch dates, um, it's madness. The way borders open and close. So the people that So people that flew from Perth to any other state yesterday um, immediately got off the planes and had to quarantine. That one dropped there. So, you know, it's just a, yeah. Um, hmm, it's a little bit awkward for, for, for things to happen, but I knew, <laughs> yeah, we, I had um, Christmas night, here we go, Christmas night, we were at friends, at a friend's place, and somebody there turns around and says, oh, 2021's going to be so much better, you know, we've gone through all the crap, and I turned around and I said, sorry to burst your bubble, <laughs> and she's like, what? I turned around and said, if you think 2021 is going to be any better than 2020, you need to think again. She was like, why? I said, well, we've already found out there is one, at least one new variant of the coronavirus, which we don't really know that much about, which is m more contagious than the current one that we have. You know, how many other countries are going to end up with their own new strain of coronavirus where it mutates differently. I said, you know, it's going to be a battle just to try and keep on top of one strain of COVID. But when you throw in two co strains of COVID, the immunizations, are they going to be effective for the two strains of COVID, you know? And then, you know, we're going to get others. So now we have, now I know that we have at least first strain then you have the UK strain you have the South African strain so there's three different types of COVID viruses you know when we get our vaccines are they going to cover all three and then from there what's going what's going to mutate from to affect you know there's going to be another mutation that will actually affect people that already are vaccinated we don't know how long the vaccination is going to last for it's all the unknowns. I said, you know, I said to her, we have been lucky where we are, but in WA, we get hit with a COVID case. It's going to hit hard because we don't social distance, we don't wear masks, we, we don't have the restrictions. So people have been walking around. If someone gets out there in the community with it, they'll be walking around, there'll be no social distancing. People won't be conscious of having to wash their hands or sterilise, you know, like we used to. And it's going to spread so much easier. It's going to spread as if the disease didn't exist before and we'd only just learnt about it. And she looked at me and went, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> we were so lucky. Nearly made it to 10 months, we were so lucky. So now people have to learn to wash their hands again. Do you know, it's really funny when you look at it, you know, how personal hygiene, people getting reminded that, you know, of personal hygiene, that's, you know, washing your hands is a big, <laughs> is a standard part of life, isn't it? And then they make a big song and dance about having to wash your hands. And it's like, my God, I hope you were washing your hands before that. You know, just, yeah. But hand sanitizers are about everywhere. We have plenty here at home. 
I have <laughs> bottles and my work tray, my work backpack, my handbag, my car, front door. <laughs> Yeah. but yeah see what happens I have to see what happens so what else is going on what else is going on in life because you know that's the big one for us at the moment there's nothing else really going on in life um, my eldest boy <laughs> is supposed to be coming up to Perth <laughs> to see a specialist <laughs> um, but that's not for another two weeks two two or three weeks so hopefully we'll be out of lockdown by then if we're not out of lockdown he won't be up here and he's going to end up having to suffer longer um, because he is not what he needs to be done isn't life threatening so if they close if at the moment we have different categories of surgery uh, you know have been cancelled or postponed um, so you know if he if he comes up and he needs a surgery he won't be able to get it done because Things are getting postponed. He won't get the opportunity to get in. Whoops. Come on up. Goes there. Um, so, we'll see. I'm hoping you're still going to be able to get up, but... I very much doubt that he will be up. I've already put in place the request for compassionate leave because if he if he does go in for surgery, it's on his feet, um, and it'll be both feet, which means he won't be very mobile. <laughs> so he'll be relying on his mummy to do a little bit of stuff for him. So we'll see what happens there with him and whether he comes up or not. I very much doubt that he'll be eager to come up until everything's sorted up here for COVID. He won't he's not allowed he's not allowed to come in. Or if they if somebody comes into Perth now, they can't leave Perth and they have to abide by quarantine. So, you know. They've got to abide by, sorry, not quarantine. They have to abide by the lockdown rules. Even our Premier has turned around and told the other states, we urge you not to let anyone from your state come to our state. It's really funny. We're so different to the other, the East Coast, some, some of the East Coast states. We have people that complain that when they come to Perth, they had to quarantine before they can go to their jobs, which is what we've got. We have that situation here, where you come, you go, you live in the east coast and you work here. You know, you have to quarantine before you go to work. So, yeah, there's it's one person that's complaining, um, big time. It's ridiculous, and you, you get tempted to turn around and tell them, "Well, you don't have to come here." Um, but just hang on, just making sure I've got the right one. Um, he complains about that he has to quarantine, and you know, back when this all came about in 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 the world, the people that work for the company I work for that do FIFO, fly in, fly out were given the opportunity to be relocated to Perth or to Western Australia them and their family could be relocated company's expense 
and then they wouldn't have to quarantine. You know. And then those that do actually end up quarantining, I tell you what, I couldn't afford to spend one night in the places where they're getting um, the ability to stay. So they are getting they are getting some magnificent locations to quarantine. Um, you know, company paid for. And they're still whinging about the, that they have to quarantine. If they'd actually just gone, bit the bullet and moved to WA, they wouldn't have as much to whinge about. But it happens. It happens. So yeah, these guys that are there whinging about having to quarantine, it's like, well, you know what? If you don't like quarantining, how about you find a job in your own state where you don't have to go into quarantine? That's how my feeling about it. Uh, you know, if you don't need to go, if you if you can stay in your own state and do a job, these guys are paid so well so well that they won't get another job that 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 rate anywhere else except in WA except for the West Australian mining companies is mining companies you know train drivers earn more than double what I earn yeah, and I class myself as a you know, reasonable wage I'm underpaid for what I do, but I still want a pretty good wage. Um, but yeah, just I watched one of the guys in his Facebook posts, and it's you get there and just want to slap him and say, "Well, you don't have to come over here to work. You can stay in your own state and find a job there." Yeah. But if the company is prepared to pay for you to quarantine, pay for your accommodation, pay for your food, while well, you're actually not there earning them any money at all, you know, maybe you're on a good wicket. If you actually had to pay for your own quarantine, I'm quite sure that if some of these people had to pay for their own quarantine, they would quickly find a job in their own state. Hmm. So yeah, this has been a COVID chat basically. Just basically that's all this one is. Uh I suppose a little bit of a catch up on what I've done. So I have completed the Mystery Diamond Painting, so it was an ever moment, Mystery Diamond Painting. Haven't done a review of it, love the picture. Sandy, if you're listening, Sandy, love that picture you chose, it's gorgeous. So I completed that one. Uh, the TSA Shark, I completed that one. I'm glad I completed that one, that one's done. And by me saying that one's done is giving you an idea on how I felt about it which will probably make some people unhappy. So when that review comes out, meh, it'll be interesting. Um, it'll be interesting to see whether I get the same response from Rachel as what happened when I did the unboxing. That was an interesting process. I can understand someone that sells leaving comments on um, a unboxing directed at me. No issue at all. If you don't like the way I've unboxed something and you think I'm wrong, definitely put it down there. 
I will say though my unboxings are always about how I feel at the time with the information I have at the time. It's the kidding up that actually does give me the better indication on on stuff, on the quality, you know, the, the drills, all of that. That's all on in the kidding up mainly. Um, but I will say, Rachel, for anyone that put a negative comment against TSA on their unboxing, she commented on every post. Every person that made a negative comment, she put a post, she responded to them. And I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, to me, and I understand why she's doing it. It's to defend her company and her company's name. But to me, it's really... I found it rather off-putting. Um, so you haven't seen me work on the shark. Because the reason why you never saw me work on the shark was because... I didn't want her taking over comments. If I turned around and said something, or somebody turned around and said something on uh, while I was working on it, I could see that she would be the person that would actually put comments directly onto those people. Um, yeah. And doing a big defend, defend, defend. If, yeah. We all have our opinions, we all have our experiences and for the comments that I made when I unboxed the TSA, um, the comments I made when I unboxed the TSA, I was corrected in things that I said wrong. And I will say, not, it didn't like politely corrected. It was lecture corrected. I received, after the, when I did the unboxing, I actually received an email from Rachel. And it wasn't just a quick short little email. It was a full on email. Full on. And basically I got a lecture. So, when I do the review for TSA, it's going to be interesting. Um, I didn't like the mounting film. Don't like it. Just don't. It's not. Nah. My personal opinion of mounting adhesive is yuck. I won't order from TSA again. I don't like that mounting adhesive. And I will say that is my personal opinion. I will also say for the mood that I'm in, I'm not ready to do a review uh, of that. I will say the drills were trash. Miss, well, actually no, not sh trash. Although I did have knobbly bits I did have one of my colors was stuck together severely um, knobbly bits uh, but the miss the sizings the sizes were not even yeah but <laughs> here we go I'm semi reviewing it on this whipping chat I need to stop that because this is not the review um so I completed that did the masks, I put kimono up, there's another video that I'm trying to edit and I just can't seem to do, I'm going to have to do, I think the only thing I can do is a voiceover for that one, um, I've walked it for, I hate doing voiceovers when I'm 
when I'm doing videos I hate doing voiceovers <laughs> I don't know how people manage to do it but I'm gonna have to do it so that you can see it because she's absolutely gorgeous the uh, way she is positioned is just amazing Ooh. I think I've only got one of these eyes in here I hope okay on to the cards where's the card there it is um Excuse that, another, another yawn. On that note, I just realised I made a coffee. An hour into a whip and chat and I haven't even had a coffee, had my coffee. <laughs> it's almost cold. It's too cold to drink. Um, so yeah, I suppose I'm going to leave it there. My big thing is, you know, at the moment is focusing on, I don't try and get myself together and be able to edit, but it's just, the editing is just, my motivation to edit is just not there. Um, it will come back. It will come back. This whip and chat, there's no editing required. It's just going to go up. And that's it you get the first bit where I actually show you this diamond painting how it looks and then you get the whip and chat so it's only just going to be those two bits put together so there's no major editing which is a good thing uh, cars so yeah I'm going to leave this whip and chat here I will say gems thank you for uh, listening uh, we'll see what what comes in the next couple of weeks um, comment below I have a Facebook page or Facebook group for Diamond in the Rough I very rarely post on it I went and looked on it last night and saw that somebody's put a post on there a little while ago when I haven't put a response on that's how bad I am with the Facebook side of things I'm looking at closing that group up because we don't, well, I don't post in it very often and you guys don't post in office. So what I'm going to do, um, by the end of February, I'll um, close that group, even if, maybe even sooner. Um, you know, I just don't see, I, I don't see any value in the Facebook group and trying to keep it going and I don't want people to feel like I'm ignoring them with the fact that I just don't go on the, face, on the Facebook group very often um, I mean I fairly I don't post that often on many Facebook groups at all anyway so um, it's going to be something really interesting for me to really get into posting on a Facebook group but on that note I am going to finish off here I am going to say James thank you for sticking with me and uh, there will be videos I think I might stick with just whipping chats for a little bit we'll see how we go um, yeah that's all I can probably say is see how we go and for you for the gems that have left messages thank you Thank you very much to for me to have that support is great. Um, I really do appreciate your comments and thoughts. Um, and yeah, when I'm <laughs> less scatterbrained, although it's so funny because of the, like, most of the conversation at the start of this whip is um, in relation to COVID because it's the one thing that my mind is so focused on at the moment and it can't focus on anything else except for that. Um, yeah, yeah, 
So trying to focus on something else is a little bit awkward. Uh, however, you will see that, you know, I've been diamond painting, I've been getting things done in the diamond painting side of things. Um, I'll be kidding up soon. I think I've got <laughs> I've got to do my reviews and de kit <laughs> before I can kit up. So, you know, there's going to be some reviews, but um, <laughs> when I edit and upload them, will be <laughs> will be interesting. But at least I'll record the process of um, the review when the kitting down. Yeah. Okay, so Gems, on that note, I will say thank you for uh, listening to me waffle on. And yeah, comment, like, subscribe, share, all that jazz. And uh, bye for now.